What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel Critical Overlord here. So this will be the recap for Chucky Season 1, Episode 8, the season finale, and a fair to dismember. The episode kicks off with Andy at the door, as we saw him at the end of the last episode. At the door, and Junior and Chucky are still above watching from upstairs. Junior leaves to handle Andy at the front door, who says he is here to meet Jake. Andy asks about Junior's family before Junior decides to let him in. Andy says he met Jake through an online chat group that to sell Chucky. He says he'd love to see the doll, but the doll has left the room by the time they get back upstairs, that being Andy and Junior. Junior pretends that Logan is home and Andy asks to look around for the doll, and Junior says he doesn't mind. Andy introduces himself to Junior and then goes into the bathroom after hearing a phone ringing. The tub in the bathroom is filled with bubbles and Logan's phone is found by Andy who notices a movement from the bubbles so he reaches his hand down to check it out. He asks where Jake is after he's done and tells Junior to call him if he sees the doll or Jake. Andy leaves the house and Chucky rises from the toilet where he was hiding in the bathroom because Andy, he says Andy would have never checked there. Junior asks why he didn't kill Andy and Chucky says because Andy had a gun so referencing the time when they had met back up again at the end of curse of chucky if you watch the unrated version uh he says because andy had a gun before going over all the weapons he can't stand that people have used against him lexi and jake are then shown contemplating why chucky has been trying to get one of the kids to kill jake believes that it has that it has that it has to be a spell and then the doll in the house with them comes to life and kyle arrives to shoot it dead after it tries to stalk and kill lexi and jake Kyle introduces herself before explaining that the voodoo trick Chucky explaining the voodoo trick Chucky has a plan to convince one of the kids to kill so that he can create an entire army. Kyle drugs Jake and Lexi to keep them from to keep them safe as she claims and then we jump to Tiffany coming home to Nika. Chucky is in control of the body of Nika and attacks Tiffany wanting to kill her, but Junior and his doll arrive to convince Nika to not kill Tiffany. Chucky runs the Chucky doll runs into Tiffany's arms and she takes everyone downstairs to meet the Chucky army. Chucky gives orders to the team and names rules including not killing babies because they aren't savages. This is one of the more comedic moments and Chucky tells the army no one under the age of five or six. Tiffany is having an army of dolls delivered to the theater and this confirms that she's the guest at the mayor's event where they're going to be showing the screening of Frankenstein. The Chucky doll talks to himself about what it's like to be in Nika's body. Then Tiffany is upset at them and says neither one of them is a man at all. Nika gets up and says she doesn't see a lady before 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 Tiffany slaps Nika back into control of the body since she respects her sometime more than Chucky when he's in control of Nika's body. Chucky tells Tiffany to kill Nika because there's several pieces of him that exist so killing Nika is irrelevant to him. Tiffany struggles so Junior is who he calls on next and Junior asks who Nika who is Nika and before Junior kills Nika Tiffany attacks the doll slitting its throat. Junior is about to attack her but Tiffany reminds Junior he's gonna he's not gonna make it out of town without her she picks the chucky head Tiff, tiffany by the that bean picks up the chucky head that she just severed and reveals that she is sick of chucky and his small <laughs> penis before also revealing that she was the one one of the other people i guess because we know nika's mom did this too she called the cops on chucky the night he was gunned down so then we flash to a young tiffany calling asking for detective norris and then we jump back to the present Tiffany is headed out with Junior, Nika, and a new doll that Junior grabbed from the cult. Devin watches as the decapitated Chucky head instructs it to kill Devin, but Andy comes in beating it to death with a bat. He lets Devin free before torturing the Chucky head for answers on where the dolls are. Kyle has arrived at the house and Andy hears her open the door where Tiffany set a bomb and an explosion goes off as she opens the door while Devin is still inside. We jump to Lexi and Jake waking up complaining about Kyle drugging them. Lexi tells Jake to check her alerts and it's a headline about an explosion at Chucky's house and they cry realizing Devin was there when the explosion went off. Jake goes to Devin's room to mourn his death but Devin is alive and and well making it home. He tells Jake that Andy and Kyle didn't make it out of the fire so Andy and Kyle are dead at this point. They go over the fact of Chucky needing to kill an innocent to build an army and realize that the innocent must be Junior and he killed his dad. 
At the benefit that the mayor was talking about, the mayor introduces Jennifer Tilly as the guest. Junior distracts Lexi from her mom's speech, and the mayor announces giveaways of 72 good guy dolls being sent to children for charity. Lexi is shown following Junior down a hallway with Chucky holding a knife to his throat. She runs as he turns the corner, crying out her name. Back at the town benefit meeting, everyone is watching Frankenstein, but the mayor notices Lexi is gone. Lexi finds the doll and asks what it did to Junior before Junior comes from behind with a knife and a six mile as Lexi looks scared. Chucky tells Caroline the doll that's with Caroline, that this is his favorite part of the movie as he laughs when it happens. Lexi's dad shows up and the doll with Caroline disappears. Junior tells Lexi he thinks that she should get they should get back together and that Chucky taught him to not be afraid but be a man. Lexi's dad is shown dead, leaking blood into popcorn that the mayor bought. Chucky stabs him from under his seat and does it to several other people. This creates chaos and mayhem in the auditorium. The mayor struggles to make it out of the theater while everyone runs all over her. Junior tries to convince Lexi to join him and Chucky. Devin has arrived with Jake and tells Caroline that Devin will get her safety while he looks for any Chucky dolls. This literally reminded me of the Blob 1998 theater scene. Jake screams at Chucky who tells Jake that Hackensack will be remembered for the body count of his and how Hackensack was ground zero for his army invading America. Chucky and Jake fight while Jake struggles to understand how a doll can be so strong. Lexi admits to Junior she loved him because he was different and always forgave her. Chucky tells Junior to kill her but he attacks the doll instead stabbing it to death. Junior realizes Chucky stabbed him in the chest as well and dies telling Lexi to tell everyone that he is sorry. Jake overpowers his Chucky doll and refuses the knife to kill Chucky from Chucky from Devin to beat him with his hands. Chucky reminds Jake he was happy his dad died, but he remembered he was still upset that they never get to better their father's son bond. Jake chokes Chucky till his eyes pop out after he says his relationship with Devin <laughs> is so gay. So they leave the theater and outside we see Lexi with her mom and sister crying about their dad. She tells them Junior died and Tiffany is shown reminding the delivery guy to get the dolls to the airport on time or she'll kill him. Before he can drive off, Andy attacks him so Andy is alive and nods at the kids before shooting Tiffany a bird while driving off with the van. They think they've won but while Andy is driving, the Tiffany doll emerges from the back of the van and aims a gun at Andy introducing herself. She tells him to shut up and drive. Tiffany is shown back with Nika and reveals that she cut her arms and legs off because who knows when she Chucky will take back over and try to kill her. Nika screams in horror before we jump to Mrs. Fairchild watching the ch watching the kids visit some graves while Devin commentates on what they've been through. Devin, Lexi, and Jake hug crying. And then we see a hand, a gloved hand, come over a tree that appears to be belonging to an unnamed person. And then the episode ends. So that is my recap for Chucky Season 1, Episode 8. Let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below. If you have already, of course, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notification and miss a video. In the description, I have links to my social media accounts, my Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course, if there's any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.